In today's episode, you'll once again find three interesting topics related to current events in spaceflight. The first topic will show us how engineers are preparing for the return of humans to the moon. Specifically, we'll discuss the technology of creating hardened pathways on the moon. The second topic will cover the Falcon 9 rocket launch, which may have set another record for SpaceX. Why may have? We'll explain it for you. In the final segment, we'll showcase a stunning photo of Galaxy IC 5332 captured by the Hubble Space Telescope. The American Artemis program is already in motion, and in a few years, humans are set to return to the moon. Unlike the Apollo program half a century ago, this mission isn't just about planting flags, leaving boot prints in the regolith, and collecting samples. The goal now is to learn how to exist on the moon for extended periods sustainably. However, there are numerous challenges to overcome. One of the most troublesome is lunar regolith. This fine dust covers practically the entire lunar surface, and despite its microscopic grain size, it can cause numerous problems. Its edges are incredibly sharp like crushed glass. Regolith clings to spacesuits, can abrade moving parts, and when it covers a heat exchanger, it can endanger the operation of rovers. The turning of their wheels causes significant regolith disturbance, much like the exhaust of a landing lunar lander. Engineers from the European Space Agency had the idea to learn how to harden the moon's surface so that pathways and improvised landing zones could be created. With a solidified surface, regolith disturbance would be less intense. After several experiments using artificial lunar regolith analogs, researchers from the European Space Agency developed a system that yielded excellent results. Using a 12-kilowatt laser, they managed to melt imitation lunar regolith, which subsequently solidified into something resembling glass. Since potential cracks are difficult to repair, engineers searched for an appropriate shape in which the tiles would have minimal contact. They eventually settled on a triangular shape, measuring about 20 centimeters across with a hollow center. The laser could melt the regolith to a depth of nearly two centimeters, and if necessary, multiple layers could be applied to achieve the required strength. On the moon, this laser could be replaced by a lens focusing sunlight onto a single point. Experts estimate that a landing pad measuring 100 square meters and 2 centimeters thick could be created in 115 days. On October 22nd, at 2.17 Universal Time, nine Merlin rocket engines roared to life. Their ignition separated the Falcon 9 rocket from its Florida launch pad, SLC-40. At first glance, the Starlink 6-24 mission seemed like another routine launch of Starlink satellites. However, there's one detail that sets this mission apart. When SpaceX was launching first-generation Starlink satellites, there were usually around 60 under the payload fairing. In the subsequent series referred to as the 1.5th generation, slightly larger satellites flew, with about 50 on each mission. The current second-generation mini-satellites are even larger, so Falcon 9 usually carries 22 of them. There were missions with fewer than 22 of the second-generation mini-satellites under the payload fairing, but more than 22 hadn't launched at once. Until now, during the Starlink 6-24 mission, Falcon 9 carried a total of 23 second-generation mini-satellites. 
Given that each of them weighs around 800 kilograms, the payload weight for this mission would be 18.4 metric tons, setting a new record. So why do we refer to this record as possible rather than confirmed? SpaceX provided the number of satellites launched, but neither the company nor Elon Musk have yet mentioned that any records were broken. Typically, SpaceX has proudly announced such achievements in the past. It's possible that the company is saving this announcement for later, or perhaps the satellites were somehow lighter than usual. What is certain is that this was the first time Falcon 9 launched 23 second generation mini satellites. The first stage was only used for the fourth time in this case and performed a successful soft landing on the, of course I still love you drone ship. This is the Spiral Galaxy IC5332, located approximately 30 million light years from Earth. It can be found in the Sculptor constellation and is positioned almost face on to us, allowing a clear view of its structure. This galaxy falls under the classification of SABC in the galaxy catalog. The S signifies it as a spiral galaxy. Its arms, adorned with bright stars and darker dust, are well visible in the image, radiating from the center. The AB denotes the appearance of the galaxy's center. It lacks a clear bar shape at their core that is commonly observed in other galaxies. The lowercase c at the end indicates how tightly wound the arms of the galaxy are. While a suggests very tight winding, d denotes very loose winding. IC5332, with its medium winding, showcases this particular image's structure. This image was captured by the WFC-3 camera on Hubble telescope, utilizing five channels in visible light and one ultraviolet channel. The original resolution of the image is 4067 by 3987 pixels and is available for download via the link provided in the video description. Thank you for your attention to today's episode of Spaceflight News. We are delighted in your interest in space news, and to ensure you do not miss future episodes, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Additionally, you can find other interesting news on our profile on Social Network X, formerly known as Twitter. The link can be found in the video description.